no one really considered this very unique and dynamic situation would happen. That's according to an inside source that I have at NASA. So let's talk about the latest with Starliner and I'll tell you more about what my inside source told me. As we await the next press conference to hear how officials will proceed with Starliner and getting Butch and Sunny home, I gathered some insider information. You see, I have one specific question that I didn't hear answered in the presser. Did NASA know before sending the astronauts up to the ISS that the autonomous abilities of Starliner would basically have an asterisk next to the word. In other words, did they know Starliner software wasn't actually configured to take Starliner home without crew? And Eric Berger has been a huge source of information about Starliner, including inside information and this tweet, which is a little bit savage. Quote, if you're looking for reliable information on Starliner, I fulsomely recommend Boeing.com. Fulsomely in a way that expresses a lot of admiration or praise for someone often too much in a way that does not sound sincere. Very sly, but it did lead me to click on this article and oh my gosh. Let me give you some context first. In Boeing's own words, here is what they claimed about the Starliner spacecraft back in April, just a mere few months before the launch. And you can look at the date, April 4th, 2024, five ways the Boeing Starliner wows. Learn what it takes to build a fully autonomous space craft with manual control options. Boeing wrote, when the Boeing CST-100 Starliner departs on its upcoming crew flight test, the spacecraft will have astronauts aboard for the first time. While the spacecraft is fully autonomous, should the astronauts need to take manual control, they can. How about they had to take manual control on the way up, and what about it being fully autonomous would need several weeks to actually make this a function? And I will add this, that we were able to rendezvous and dock because of the team effort. What we did, taking over manual control while they assessed the situation and coming to the conclusion that we could re-enable those, those RCS jets that had failed and then get us here safely, as I said, with the precision still there with some degraded thrusters. Uh, and we feel confident that this team will do the same on the way home. So let's look at it. Number one, the spacecraft can fly and course correct on its own. Boeing writes, the Starliner operates in some ways like self-driving cars aspire. The spacecraft's features resemble more sophisticated versions of cruise control and hands-free driving, meaning astronauts don't have to do anything if they like. They can simply enjoy the ride. Oh, hold on. They don't have to do anything until they're forced to do something because things are going wrong, like with the thrusters. Boeing also writes astronauts and ground crews choose their level of control. Just because the Starliner can fly to and from the International Space Station without human intervention does not mean humans can't take charge. I mean, what? Am I reading the same thing as you guys? This looks like something that you would find on a spoof website. Right now, Starliner can't leave the International Space Station without human intervention. Yes, they've said that they wanted to test more and learn about some of the problems that Starliner has had from the ground, but let's be real. Safety is definitely a concern or else the astronauts would already be coming home via Starliner. And so they've stalled in part because Starliner cannot come home without human intervention right now. And now here's a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Magic Spoon. It's hard to believe, but I'm about 17 months into my recovery from breaking my femur, and now I'm starting to lift more at the gym and load the weight so that I can build muscle on my new leg. I'm sure many of you have recovered from an injury before. Maybe you're recovering from one right now. But putting in the work is a big part of that process and also getting the right nutrition. The macronutrient that most helps your body repair and restore is protein and as someone who's not a big meat eater I tend to not get enough but Magic Spoon helps me change that. Magic Spoon is a convenient source of protein and it makes it so easy for me to get more protein when I'm too busy or tired to cook or even just got home from the gym. It's also great for a low carb lifestyle with four to five grams of net carbs per serving. Also, do you like my cup? <laughs> Magic Spoon is high protein, simple with no artificial ingredients. And if you really wanna eat it on the go and you don't have time for milk, they also have these Magic Spoon treats. So these are basically cereal bars. This actually has almost exactly the same amount of protein in a serving of cereal 
and it's great for on the go. So you can use my code Ellie or click the link in the description to try Magic Spoon cereal today and get $5 off. You can also find Magic Spoon at your nearest grocery store. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee online. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link in the description to go to magicspoon.com Ellie for $5 off. And this reason, number three, Starliner is software driven. The keyword software that we've heard so much about. Quote, to do the cool stuff that Starliner does, there is lots of complexity in the system and in each component. The most challenging and rewarding part is figuring out how to make it all work together. But it sounds like you didn't consider every single possible scenario. All right, so some of those reasons really made me feel like I was reading an article from The Onion. But again, back to my question, did NASA know about this before or did just Boeing? To break it down and make it somewhat entertaining, I wonder if the conversation went one of two ways. Hey, NASA. Hey. Hey. Uh, before we send those uh, two veteran astronauts up there, there's something you should know. They have to be in the Starliner to return home with the current software data load. Wait, so you're saying that if something goes wrong and safety is questioned for their return home, this is going to create a big media spectacle. Well. If something were to go wrong, but the chances are small, we're very confident in the Starliner. I don't foresee any problems happening. All right. Well, I guess I guess if you think the chances are small, we'll, we'll go ahead because we got to get them up there and Lord knows we're behind schedule. Or did it look like this? Hey, Boeing, uh, Butch and Sonny have been up there way longer than we expected, and we're looking over your website. It said that Starliner could return fully autonomously, no software changes needed. Now we're hearing another story. Did you know this before we sent them up there? Uh, yeah, NASA, but it didn't make sense to get hung up on that little detail. Uh, please don't have us in the middle of this. Okay, well, that's great. I guess we have to answer to all the press conferences and it really would have been nice to know the accurate description of the 2024 Starliner. Uh, this is going to create a big headache for us and we have some pretty big decisions to make that are gonna have ripple effects either way. Well, you know what they say, any press is good press. So look, you're probably wondering, what did the NASA inside source say? Well, first they wanted to explain the software situation, but then I asked them about whether or not this was known ahead of time, to which they answered, quote, I would look at it from the perspective of a configuration change, not an upgrade. So in essence, here's the explanation. The capsule was originally designed for crewed missions, unlike the Dragon capsule, which started as an unmanned cargo vehicle. Boeing's OFT-1 and two test flights used an unmanned version to avoid risking crew. Now Boeing has transitioned to the final crewed configuration, including manual controls for the crew. The software has been updated to match this new configuration, which doesn't require the previous unmanned software. To illustrate, consider converting a gas car to an electric one. You would replace the gas engine's computer with one designed for electric motors, rather than keeping the old computer for potential future use with a gas engine. Similarly, the Starliner's capsule's new crewed configuration doesn't need the old unmanned software or at least that's what they thought. And this is the part I want you to listen to from this exchange. Quote, so if you want to know when, well, always, but it wasn't a reasonable consideration to retain the unmanned Starliner capsule software to work in the manned version of the capsule as a contingency. Would you call that a mistake? Maybe, but let's think about the need to really ever plan to send folks up to space and leave them there with no way to fly home. They would always choose to risk the ride versus having no way home. No one really considered this very unique and dynamic situation would happen. Hope that helps. So I thought that that insight was really interesting. Of course, Boeing is under a lot of fire right now, not just for the stuck liner or strand liner saga everyone and their mom is talking about, but a new report about SLS is also damning for Boeing. According to a new NASA report, Boeing was using underqualified workers to build their rockets for spaceflight, causing quality control issues. So yeah, Boeing has not only touched Starliner, it's also working on the Space Launch System or SLS project, and NASA recently audited them. SLS has been in development since 2014 and is scheduled to make a flight to the moon in 2028 but NASA wanted to find out what has caused delays and increased costs. 
The NASA Office of Inspector General alleged Boeing had a lack of trained and experienced aerospace workers working on the SLS, with NASA calling it a major factor in delaying construction. NASA found that efforts by Boeing to provide in-house training have been inadequate and significant quality control deficiencies persisted at the Machoud assembly facility. So if you guys wanna know more about that report, let me know and I'll make a separate video. But yeah, not looking good for Boeing. But there may be a silver lining. Boeing did just reveal a new CEO, so we can only hope he's able to turn the reputation of Boeing around. The new CEO, Robert Kelly Ortberg, took the reins of the aerospace giant last week. The 64-year-old aerospace veteran previously headed supplier Rockwell Collins, and he inherits a company mired in safety and manufacturing crisis and just a bad reputation in general. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I was definitely surprised to see someone from NASA to reach out to me, and of course I will keep their uh, identity anonymous, but I do think that it's interesting what they said, and hopefully we get more insight soon as a decision is reached. I told you I'd keep you up to date on this information, so I will continue to cover the story, and thank you so much for watching my channel, Ellie in Space. One last thing, please subscribe so you don't miss any future updates, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, and also, you guys might recognize this song. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from a cape launch pad aboard a brand new ship, aboard a brand new ship. Butch was a mighty engineer, sunny, brave, and true. Two astronauts set sail that day for a 10-day review, a 10-day review. The launch had faced a few delays and various problems found. But finally the ship took off with Butch and Sonny bound, with Butch and Sonny bound. The flight was as smooth as it could be, the Starliner's booster toss. But soon it seems problems showed up and the mission could be lost. The mission could be lost. The ship arrived at ISS and it didn't take long to know. They're stranded there for much longer than they had planned to go. Than they had planned to go. The crew aboard the ISS gave them a place to stay. Did spacewalks to repairs and more. They bravely worked each day. They bravely worked each day. So join us here each week, my friends. It'll probably be a while for two brave souls lost in space here on ISS Isle, here on ISS Isle. <laughs>